All right, it is uh, day three of actual install work on this Mercedes Sprinter 3500 170 extended uh, 2012. Uh, Sean, what's on the agenda today? So today we're gonna finish off building the board. We're gonna uh, mount the inverter, put the batteries in, and get that board uh, finish mounted and bring all the cabling that's behind it into the components it needs to go to. Uh, finish the inverter, all the AC work, and uh, get the batteries where they're gonna go and get them all hooked up. All right, sounds good, let's get on it. This 18-2 connects to the Bosch. Okay. Uh, the black part of it, you can use this ground, you can just ground. Sure. ground. You, you can combine this, this one, and this one, all to that ground piece okay. over there. So that, and then and the, the other 18-2 is the one that runs to the on-off switch? No, the other 18-2 is just an extra that you run. You'll have to like make your new 18-2. Wow, it looks like you've made a lot of progress since we looked at this last, Sean. Uh, all of this complicated uh, wiring is part of why we say that these uh, V4 lithium kits take about 30 hours longer than some of the other kits. So if you look at this uh, wiring diagram, that's kind of your guide, and um, you interpret that and turn it into this, and basically what this is is our V4 system uh, that uses Victron batteries. It isolates all the inputs and outputs and controls them to keep you from overcharging or over discharging the lithium batteries, which is actually a fairly complicated deal, much different than AGM batteries because uh, there's no pukert effect with lithium batteries, whereas AGM batteries or lead acid batteries, their voltage varies depending on how charged they are. Um, another thing this does is it also prevents you from putting a charge on the batteries when the batteries are frozen, which can damage lithium batteries. So we use a lot of uh, Victron components here to do that. Um, this here is the shunt, which is part of battery monitoring. This is a Lynx distributor, which we use to combine the two batteries in parallel and individually fuse them. Then this is a master disconnect for the whole system. Uh, I'm guessing this is the disconnect for the inverter, is yep, that correct? Yep, that'll be the inverter on off. Okay, and this is a class T fuse going to that inverter. Mm -hmm. um, this BP is, is this the solar? That's the solar disconnect, okay. yep. Yeah, so this basically works as a switch that turns on and off the solar charge, uh, mainly turning it off if the batteries are frozen. This is a BP that uh, protects you from overly discharging your batteries with a DC load. This breaker is for the alternator charge. This breaker is for uh, solar charge. This breaker is for DC loads. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the DC distribution box, so we've got one fuse in there and we're gonna have one DC outlet. Uh, the customer can add another outlet or as many as they want and uh, just add more fuses in here and use this circuit. Mm -hmm. This is the solar charge controller. Uh, right now we have the output wired up, actually, yeah, through the battery. So we've got the positive off to the battery, which is controlled through that BP, and we have the uh, negative, which goes to our negative junction post. Um, is this the, this is going to be for the solar charge yep, controller? Yeah, that'll be solar on up. So this will interrupt solar before it goes into the controller if you want to just test your system and turn something off. Um, this device communicates to the lithium batteries via these ports here where it takes M8 cables and it sends a CD, which is charge disconnect, or an LD, load disconnect signal to our proprietary V4 board, which this is kind of the brains behind everything. It takes input from the VE bus BMS, which is the Victron uh, communication device, and it uh, has a temperature sensor, which monitors the batteries to keep them from to make sure that there's uh, they're not frozen. And then this is all outputs. So you've got alternator control, solar control, DC load control, and then two different relays. One of them we use to control uh, the Victron Multi Plus inverter. Yep. And let's see, this is a bracket for mounting the inverter. Uh, what's this grommet for, Sean? That's gonna bring in the 10-3 cable. That is gonna go to the DIN rail. 
Um, it's the main. So the right Japan here. three cable from the shore power. Yep, connection. exactly. It's okay. gonna come through there. Okay. So we're working on today. We're gonna drill holes through the board to bring all the cables that you see behind the um, the coach here, behind this wall, through the uh, board and onto the components that they need to go to. So here's where alternator will come in, solar, and uh, this is gonna be the chassis uh, negative. Chassis ground. Chassis yep. negative connection. Okay. Yep, right there. So everything's gonna okay. get brought through the board and go to where it needs to go. Okay, yeah, this is the most complicated part. This is the time consuming part. Uh, this is the part where you're gonna wanna do a lot of planning. Yep. All right, Dustin's working on the alternator charging system. Tell me what you've got going on here. So right now I'm wiring up the Bosch relay to communicate with the Cirix. Okay, and this is coming off the uh, 18.2 that you guys routed. To the V4 so board. So you picked yep. one of those, and uh, you got the red going to your uh, Bosch. Yep. This will obviously go to ground. Bosch is also communicating with the momentary switch and the Cirix relay, which carries the alternator charge. Okay, and you installed a momentary switch right here. Yep. And uh, so the what, what's the momentary switch do? Uh, the momentary switch allows the boost feature. So if, say, the engine battery dies, he will be able to start his engine off of our house system and then recharge his battery when the alternator starts. Okay, so is it a double click or just a one click? Two clicks for that feature. Two clicks, yep. and that uh, manually combines the lithium battery bank with your starter battery bank. Yep. That's not gonna harm the battery banks. It's just going to allow you to run your ignition, basically, if you had a dead starter battery. Exactly, a little reassurance. All right. Cool, thank you. Absolutely. So we have a couple of these columns that are in the sprinter vans. Some of them are passed through, so this is just from the factory. I can go ahead and just put my hand right through there. Um, same with top and bottom. But a lot of the columns, including the ones over the wheel wells and this very rear one, are sealed, meaning that you can't go through. So in order to get your cables through like this, you need to hole saw through um, both layers. It's kind of like this uh, to get through and get the cable passed through. Um, so just be you know, aware of that, that you're not, if you're experiencing, well, how do I get through here? Well, you got to drill. <laughs> Let's see if we can get a look at that. Yep. Nice job. Mm -hmm. All right. Dustin has the alternator charging system pretty much all set up. Uh, you might see a flashing blue light down there. That says that the Cirix, which is this right there, it, the, which is the smart battery combiner is connected to the starter battery so off to the right side here this is going to our battery system and off to the left side this cable is routed down and around to the starter battery um, and we have our boost switch installed uh, where's the Bosch relay on this? right here there's the Bosch relay uh, this is a fairly challenging part of the job and it's different on different vehicles. Uh, we're working on our documentation. If you have questions and you're doing this, just send us an email. We'll send you pictures. We'll walk you through it. We'll help you get it done. Am I missing anything, Dustin? No, that sounded pretty thorough. All right, nice job. Oh, would you look at that? They installed the board. That looks sharp. I have to put some bolts on here, but this is solid. This is a work of art. Nice job. So let's also bring a uh, positive and negative feed for our DC outlet. We're going to bring it up, over, and give him that outlet right here next to your AC. Have some room. Yeah, you got sure. room there. Totally. Inverter will sit here. This is a little mat we have for our batteries. It's a non slip, um, kind of high end, almost like a gym floor mat, uh, high impact rubber. So that's going to go down just to hold his batteries for the moment. Nice. Yeah. All right, it looks like you've made a lot of progress. You've added the two 400, or two 200 amp hour batteries for a total of 400 amp hours. You've hung the inverter. Uh, you opened up the Lynx distributor. You're doing some wiring on that. Um, you're gonna be placing fuses. Where do the fuses go on that? So the fuses actually go just like this one right here, right uh -huh. in between um, this positive bus bar and this terminal down here. So the uh, four out cables coming off your batteries will meet on the lower part of this fuse. You wanna put the lugs on top of the fuse. Okay. And you guys have done some reworking on that Lynx distributor to match our unique layout on this board. Mm -hmm. uh, can you kind of summarize what you've done? Yeah, so basically we've done a copper bar into our master on off for the batteries here. Uh, this in the um, schematic actually shows like a 4 aught cable, but we're able to shrink it up quite a bit by using these copper bars. 
Um, and then same on this side for the shunt. It comes right off the uh, negative bus bar for the Lynx distributor. And so. did you take that bus bar out and switch its orientation in order to do that? No, I did not. Oh, we did you not were just able to take the end of it. Yeah, we are just able to take the end. There's actually a little plate like this that allows you to open up this port, and then okay. you can access it. Um, we cut this one down. This side is not accessible unless you take this plate out, but it's meant to be pulled and, and put back in. Okay, and for a do-it-yourself installer, um, you're probably not going to have access to these copper bars. It's just really hard to uh, mm -hmm. sell such a custom thing. We make them in our shop. It's a little yeah, bit Yeah, they all require a special bin so that there's no pressure on anything. Yeah. Um, it's pretty, pretty time-consuming, but it looks good. It, you know, you could do almost the same thing with really short kind of, just like this connection you see here, yeah. where you have a... Uh, a lug and then there's a really short piece of cable and then another lug so you can really shorten up those gaps yeah and our kits include all of the four aught you need or all the lugs and heat shrink you need to make those connections they're complete kits and it also looks like you've added to the junction posts and made some more connections so you've got your uh, chassis connection going up to the uh, load side of the shunt yep um, we have inverter behind here so this is going to the inverter to our four aught um, coming off of that and okay. then this guy right here is a two gauge cable that's coming over to our uh, negative junction post which is taking the negative uh, feed from the dc distribution one of the um, ports of the v4 board goes to this as well to get a negative signal and then um, the um, charge controller as well so just kind of condensing that or else you would actually have to run a individual feed for all of these to the shunt and it gets really busy so by terminating them over here we make it look a lot cleaner okay and uh, the batteries are in place but they're not connected yet I nope. see the, the loose M8 cables uh, yeah, there's these one. are going to go on to this and it doesn't look like they're gonna be long enough so mm -hmm. we do sell uh, extensions for the M8 cables I think the kit comes with a one meter extension, a single one meter extension, but uh, if you need more, just let us know. Yeah, They're these are pretty yeah. inexpensive. These batteries were actually only send just one um, pair, I guess, over to the um, VE bus. They actually, the two batteries will get connected as well, and then they'll just send a single pair from each over. Yeah, the batteries uh, daisy chain to each other, so one lead from one battery goes to one, the other lead from the other battery goes to this one. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else uh, new and exciting on this? Oh, no. Uh, we, we did this. <laughs> this oh, is to, yes. To allow, we're going to paint this, but this is to allow the <laughs> You the notice hinge. a problem when you try to shut the door, huh? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's uh, just to allow the hinge mechanism for the uh, sprinter van to go inside. And do that thing. would be this part here. Now you can shut the door. Yep. Okay. Well, you guys have made a lot of progress. This is looking great. I'll let you get back at it. All right, Sean, was it a productive day? Yeah, it sure looks like it. <laughs> you can tell by our mess. <laughs> um, but yes, so we have the batteries in here. Uh, we have the inverter hooked up, so it's got a 4 aught going into the, uh, the system here. And we're finishing up the AC side of things, so our main input breaker and our main panel. Um, little AC outlet that the kit comes with. Uh -huh. um, the board's mounted. All those cables you saw before are coming through the board. So here's our alternator. We have chassis uh, negative right here. That came through the board. We have solar, came through this hole. Um, comm cables, they need to go where they need to go, but they're coming through now. Okay. Um, so you can see we've pulled everything, drilled holes, and now everything's on this on this side, and the board is hard fixed. So you can tell I'm, I'm not able to move it at all. <laughs> okay, great. And one thing about our kits, um, we like to advertise them as complete kits. And for a van that isn't built out yet, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense because, you know, we have no outlets to really wire to, no appliances to wire to. But just to call it a complete kit, we do have this AC outlet coming off the sub panel just so you will actually have AC power when this is finished. Probably sometime tomorrow we should be able to get some power out of that. Yep. And uh, we will also have one DC outlet. Yep, DC, uh, which USB little guy. Yet to mount. Yeah, 12 yep. volt and then uh, the dual USBs. Yep. All right, productive day.